Hey YouTube watchers and seekers, how are you guys tonight? Repo Man 64. Um, I wanted to come back on here. I'm still learning, still trying to figure this out. Uh, trying to, I mean, like every other watcher and seeker, some of you are on here because you want to get a better idea of when Jesus is coming back. And we all want to know this. This is an event that is going to happen. And it is going to catch a lot of people by surprise. The Bible speaks of this group of people that will be crying and screaming and gnashing of teeth. They are upset. Um, they're going to scream at God saying, didn't I prophesy in your name? And those are the people that weren't prepared. They weren't watching. They weren't ready. Take heart. You are still a bride. I, well, you're still a Christian, obviously, and you are going to go to heaven. Uh, you will have to go through a seven-year tribulation period, though. And I, I want, I just, I, I just want, I want everybody to just watch and keep seeking. And I'll tell you what, in the comment sections, you are all amazing, and I really appreciate all your help. Um, you've pointed me in directions that I never saw before, and. Uh, that's what I'm here tonight is to try to reiterate and clarify things that I'm saying. Um, I had some questions about my audio and uh, I think I fixed it. I had it on stereo and now it's on mono so it should be on both speakers just fine. It was annoying I guess yesterday. I'm still learning. Um, all right so we start out Jubilee calendar. Um, on the new moon, beginning of the first month, on the new moon, beginning of the fourth month, and on the new moon, beginning of the seventh month, and on the new moon, beginning of the tenth month, and the days of remembrance, and the days of the seasons are four divisions of the year. <clears throat> now it clearly says on the new moon, right? This is the Jubilees calendar. But then it says here, words new moon above is actually translated from the Hebrew word chadesh which really means month, not new moon. Most of our Bibles make this same mistake. The verse below is an example of this mistranslation. Amos 8.5 says, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? This link shows the words new moon used in this verse is chadesh. Um... Bible or BibleHub.com shows that the word Chodesh is normally translated as the word month. And then they give an example. In fact, in Genesis 8 5 below, the word Chodesh is reflected as the word month. Below are verses from three different books reflecting the same event, and they all should be reflected as the first day of the month. Now, when I set out on this, I, I, I have never read Enoch or studied it, and I have been studying it for a few weeks now. And when I set out on this little journey that I'm on, and it, it was because I really want, I genuinely want to know what the first day of the first month is. You can't know when the Passover is on the 14th if you don't know what the first day of the first month is. Um... The only way to know that is literally by studying and trying to figure out. I think I have it figured out, but I'm not 100% sure. I am pretty confident in this, but it's not tie a rope around my ankle and go into the Holy of Holies and uh, get struck dead for being wrong. Confident. <laughs> so, put the glasses back on. You lose your reading eyesight when you hit 40. The New Year's Day must be observed on the fourth day of the week, which is called Wednesday now. Remember, there were no names to the weeks. So if you start, let's say you start creation. Well, you don't. Let's not say you don't. You do. You start creation on Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's how we call it. God calls it day one, day two, day three, day four. What happened on day four? On day four, this is because the sun and moon and stars were created on the fourth day. Therefore, 
Their first day in existence was the fourth day, and so New Year's Day must also be on the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights made in the firmament of heaven to divide the day and the night, and let them be for signs for seasons and for days and for years, to shine in the firmament of heaven and to give light upon the earth. It was so done, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, the stars, and he set them in the firmament of heaven to shine upon the earth and the rule, uh, sorry, and to rule the day and the night and to divide the light and the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning were the fourth day. So, how do we fix this problem of 364 days? When this, when Enoch made this calendar, this happened before the flood. The earth would rotate around the sun 364 days. Because of this cataclysmic event that took place, it slowed the earth down. Therefore, it took the earth 365 and a quarter days to go around the sun. The moon got all out of whack too. It used to be perfect. It used to go around at 364 days as well. So I think 364, 350, I don't recall. I'd have to check on that again. I haven't been really paying attention to the moon because there's a warning in here. Now remember, Enoch walked with God. The problem I have and the trouble I don't want to get into is to be so dogmatic about this is to say that we have to listen to Enoch. We don't know who wrote this stuff. Did he, in the Bible, I'm sorry, Enoch records that he gave everything, all those scrolls, he put them in the ark. He gave them to Noah, passed down through the generations to Noah, and Noah took them in the ark, and that's how they made it through the flood. After Noah came out of the ark, he put them over by the Dead Sea in those caverns. Or perhaps a few generations later, they hid them in there. Do I know that for sure? No. Do I state for positive fact that we should be... I respect Enoch because he walked with God. I mean, the guy went to seven, the seventh heaven. Um, we uh, uh, Our highest hope when we go to heaven is going to be the third heaven. So, I mean, Enoch was kind of a big deal, kind of a really big deal. And so uh, it's telling us here, okay, so basically from what I understand, how I understand this to be, and, and again, two weeks, there's people that have been studying this stuff for their lifetime, two weeks. From what I understand, the week started on the fourth day. That was day one of creation of the sun, moon, and stars, and that was the first day of our ability to tell time. Time started on that day. That's as I understand it. I understand that from writings from Enoch that might or might not actually be from Enoch. They might have been rewritten. I've searched and searched and searched, and, uh, and I'm a kind of person that I look at both sides of the story and I don't necessarily buy into what everybody, you know, if one guy says, no, no, you have to, I, I don't necessarily do. I'm going to give you both sides of the story because I don't want to falter on either side. Anything I say here is just for learning experience. Um, any date, right now I'm searching for the Passover. It looks like the 29th is a very high candidate for an escape, an escape that is going to happen. It is going to happen. It looks like a very good date for that to happen however i'm not stating that god said or that i figured that out or that i know that because i don't i didn't have a dream or a vision i don't know that the last day or the the day of the escape is going to be on the 29th that being said let me continue forward here okay um dead sea scrolls temper calendar blah 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 next one Enoch, Jubilees, and Dead Sea Scroll calendars were all solar calendars that agreed with each other. Their solar calendar is in agreement with the seasons of the year that Yahweh created. Plus, the solar calendar keeps the Sabbath law and feast days, the, uh, the feast day law perfectly. 
There are no early writings, documentations, or proof that the Hebrews ever used the lunar calendar. The Book of Jubilees does make this prophecy about the lunar calendar. And this is kind of important. I found this. And this is kind of what drove me to say, no, you cannot use the moon to start the new year uh, with Enoch or in the Book of Jubilees. I believe... You'll find this with the Jews that happened around the time of Jesus, a little before, a little after, where they set this up. And I'm going to tell you how that happened here in a minute. I think it's up here. Um, it's, I think it was King Antithius that was doing the moon celebration thing, and he forced this on the Hebrews. They either had to accept the new calendar that he came up with, which he was, uh, you know, he was just, uh, he wasn't... Uh, from God, he wasn't he wasn't a Jew, so uh, and they forced it, or you died if you didn't uh, follow this new calendar. So that was a rough time back then. For here we read in Jubilees six thirty six: For there will be those who assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them, and they will disturb the order and make an abominable day of the day of testimony remember they were going into the holy of holies the high priest he, he would go in there and they tied a rope around him because they couldn't figure out this moment in time the only day there was only one day the day of passover what is this day what is the day of passover that's the day jesus went to the cross it was too important to miss the day and they would send priest after priest after day after day priest after priest and they would just keep dying because they couldn't figure out what the first day is that's what set me on this course that i'm on and it's very important to me to uh figure this out all right but oh holy holy sabbath okay so everything gets messed up because of this now what i find interesting is um there are some YouTubers or YouTube uh, teachers that are stating that we're still in the first month and we're coming up on Passover. Uh, but what I find it awesome, or uh, to my advantage here, is that we are, the Jews are recognizing this as the month of Layar. And uh, that is the second month of the 12 months. Layar comes at the same time, secularly months, April, May. So we are in that right now. Okay, I wanted to go back to Stellarium again and remind you that this sun, at this moment, when it's touching the fin of the fish, this is exactly when, on the 16th, 17th, if you go to the 16th here, see, and to the 17th, that is the moment in time where our planet experiences equal time every moment after this date the days become longer than the nights because of how the planet is and then you come to i think it's september 22nd or 3rd and then it starts going the other way um as you know it starts getting uh a lot darker sooner and we lose a lot of daylight we are not currently at the we're at the equator there's a vernal equinox that happens at the equator, and then there is a equilux where the day and the night matches. And I find that over and over in Enoch. So that's why I keep getting hung up on the date that I believe I found. Here it is on the 16th and the 17th. You'll notice that... Um, I'm not going to be able to see it now, am I? 12.01, 11.59. You see that? That is the, uh, the day length right there. So somewhere in between these two points of the 16th and the 17th, I mean, it's literally nine seconds away here on the 16th, and it's a minute 49 away from the 17th. So somewhere in here, and it's but probably, I read somewhere it was 11.30 in the morning in Israel when this happened. So that right there, as I said, back here, where the sun is on that fin on this day if you will look you can look for yourself it's timedate.com and you can see for yourself that the day and the night are equal after this it comes completely 
apart. They're not equal anymore. This is the time between the 16th and 17th right here. So more so on the 16th. So I'm guessing high noon or 1130 in the morning on the 16th, perhaps or 17th. But day one starts on the 17th on St. Patrick's Day every year. It says, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. That's the Passover. That's the day the lamb was crucified. The Passover, that's the day the blood was spilled. Even in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all the Lord had commanded Moses and the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by a dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, we are defiled by a dead body of a man. They were probably, you know, they morticians or whatever. And I would imagine that somebody took over their job for 30 days so that they could enjoy the second Passover. Um, or maybe they went to war and they had to kill someone. I don't know why they would come in contact with a dead body. I personally, I have never come in contact with a dead body. So... <laughs> So, anyway, there, uh, wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer offering unto the Lord on his appointed season among the children of Israel? So, we go forward, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey far off, that's what uh, Jay Justified noticed. Why did he add that? Why would he add that part to it? He didn't even ask about that. He said about a dead body, but then the Lord comes back in and adds in a journey far off. Yet ye shall keep the Passover unto the Lord, the 14th day of the second month. You shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Okay, so... Here we are from a far journey. Your burnt offerings are not... So here, here's what happens when they start heart, uh, listening to the moon. To what purpose... This is God in Jeremiah 6. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Why? Because they had the wrong day. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hates. Can you imagine God saying from his very soul that he hates it? Because they're on the wrong day. Jesus died on one day of the year. How do we rectify that 364-day calendar of Enoch to our calendar? If you'll read in Enoch, there are three gates that are firm. They're not budged. But there's a fourth gate that's a little bit more, um, not as clear. It's not talk, spoke about it quite as clear. And I wonder, I know, I know, Enoch was taken to the seventh heaven. And he knew, he knew that there would be a day and a quarter added to our year because of the slowdown of our planet um, that happened. Um, there's several occasions in the Bible where it talks about that, where God slowed, stopped, you know, held the sun up there. Uh, for, for a while so they could finish a war and there was another time where he, he changed the dial he might have been I don't know but <clears throat> and then you have the flood so at any rate the moon and the sun are out of whack you really got to want to know the first day like I did when I set out on this you really got to want to know the first day in order to know when this feast is or when the Passover is you really got to know that and uh, to me that was very important all right, I'm out of tabs. What did I do? Okay, so down here, um, I did something extra. I, I listened to Nick Vanderlyn. Uh, he has a YouTube site, and uh, he's really cool because he, he does know a lot about the uh, Enoch calendar, and he's been studying a lot longer than I am, so I have to give credit where credit is due. I am here as New Year's Day, as the 17th, Day of Creation. Um, this is the equal lux, the equal lux, the, uh, the, the, the date that I look at as being the first day I showed you back there as to why Nick Vanderlyn, from what I can tell, I don't want to say something he said that, uh, is wrong, but from what I can tell, based on the other days that he's saying, we are three days apart. Okay. Uh, there we go. That's the new year's day using the vernal calendar, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, what's cool about this, and I'll show you right now, first Passover, 14th day. I have it showing up on the third on a uh, Tuesday. Now, that is the second day of the week. We know that Jesus went to the cross on uh, Friday, on the, uh, was that the fifth day of the week, right? So I'm off by three days. So what's kind of cool about this and listening to uh, Nick is that, uh, look at this, April 4th. That's from the Vernal. So it just so happens that this year, Resurrection Day, lands on April 4th, which is where the world celebrated it, which is where if you go on and use the Vernal uh, thing, and, and I've heard people say, well, you know, back in the day they didn't know. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they had a, a sundial. Yeah, they did. They knew exactly when the day was equal to the night. They knew. Um, not only that, Enoch was carried to the seventh heaven. He knew. So that's kind of why I was leaning towards the 17th. I am not afraid to say I'm wrong and lean towards the 20th and show that the, and, and, and it, it's kind of cool how it actually does wind up on the 4th. I, I kind of scratched my head over that one for a little while. And I said, and I listened to Nick Vanderlyn and he's uh, appears to be, again, you have to watch this whole video, but he appears to be on the same date as, uh, as the uh, day of resurrection. So I thought that was cool. Um, the second Passover is right here. This is my equal lux. So the second Passover would fall on the 29th. I didn't finish my calendar. This month has 30 days. One, two, and three. So uh, on the equal lux, it would be May 2nd. So if Nick is correct, this is the second Passover. If I am correct, this is the second Passover. And if Dr. Barry is right, then, well, actually, Dr. Barry, I actually think he's over on the second. So if, if all the seekers and, and, and all the watchers are trying to figure this out and they believe that this is going to happen on the Passover, I think Dr. Barry is actually on the first Passover. So I don't want to, again, I don't want to speak and get you to think that I know something or that we're in cahoots together because we're not. I'm doing this on my own and uh, with the help of my friends who come on the comment section to help me and I really appreciate that. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you for subscribing. Um, let me go back to where I was here. Thank you for subscribing. There we go. Ooh, that's a terrible screen. I wonder why I couldn't see me on there. I wonder if I disappear when that happens. Can I enlarge this? Yay! <laughs> Dang. Okay, so I wanted to thank everybody for subscribing. What that does is I don't make any money, and I, I wouldn't take any money anyway. I don't care about that. And um, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. What it does, though, it unlocks different things in YouTube, allowing me to make better videos, better quality. I think I'm lagging right now, actually. This is terrible. So... Um, kind of uh helpful when you do that doesn't cost you anything doesn't cost me anything i don't make anything do, you know so when i say comment like share and subscribe it's really very helpful that you do that as i always say in my videos in my lagging videos where my voice is different than my mouth oh, i gotta fix this um mark six five and six Go to a closet, a quiet place, by yourself. Look, the time is short. We're almost there. You know, if these guys are right that this is going to happen on Passover and that we're going to be going up just like Jesus rose up and this is about to happen tomorrow, maybe, the third, maybe, I don't know. I'm going to bring on Jared Justified. He's found some new stuff and I think it's pretty cool. And he has another date. Um... But I'm telling you, we're in the window now. We're here. We're at it. It's. I could be talking and then suddenly go away, which I don't. I would hope my wife would. Well, that would be. She don't, I didn't say that. My wife's going with me. She's she's a good Christian woman. Um, but maybe somebody will come here and hit the send button. Anyway, so uh, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know. You don't need to tell anybody. This is absolutely between you and your father. This is not a proud moment that you walk out that door and tell everybody what you've done because you've done nothing. 
<clears throat> God did it all. He is the author of your salvation. He is the beginning and the end. <clears throat> he is the Alpha and Omega. <clears throat> wow, I don't even know where that's come from. Um, he's everything. He did it all from beginning to end. There is nothing we've contributed whatsoever. Once you do that, this change will begin to take over you. You cannot, and I'll repeat this a hundred times, you cannot lose what God has given you. It's not yours to give away, and he's not going to give it to you and take it away. That is yours. I would question if you went into a quiet place and prayed and then ran around saying, oh, I'm saved because I went into a quiet place and prayed. It's not what it's about. And once you do it, <clears throat> and once it's genuine and real with your heart, you'll know it. You'll absolutely know it. And uh, you'll begin changing. Are you going to sin? Yeah. Um, if you sin, are you going to lose your salvation? No. But a true saved person hates sin, even though they do it, they hate it. It doesn't sit well with them at all. An unsaved person laughs about it and runs around, you know, and does it over and over again and keeps doing it as often as they can because they love the sin more than they love God. So at any rate, YouTube Repo Man 64 comment, like, share, and help me figure this out, please. Any input helping me figure this out would be awesome. I appreciate it. Talk to you later, YouTube.